Now, I believe, I believe, and I shouldn't believe, because part of the root of the word believe is lie. So maybe I shouldn't lie to myself. Let me rephrase it. I would hope, I would think, and most Chicago Bears fans have come to the realization that Nick Foles is booty cheeks. There's a reason, one year after intentionally overpaying for him to be their starter, that the Jaguars are ready to dump him off for Gardner Minshew. There's a reason for that. And I think most Bears fans have reasonably seen enough to say, you know what? I tried to buy in. I tried to believe, which again, for an organization that's done absolutely nothing, to earn that benefit of the doubt, you continue to give it. That's the true definition of insanity. Repeating the same behavior over and over and over and over again and expecting the results to be any different. But nonetheless, your Bears fans, some of the biggest morons out there, take it as a compliment and an insult, both. Mostly an insult, because it's true. It's true talk. That's why you don't like me. That's why you don't like it. Because you know it hits you where it hurts. But we can all agree that Nick Foles stinks, right? And let's put aside some of you that want to cling stubbornly to hope. You know better by now. You have to rationalize and realize. Trubisky ain't it. Mitch is a trash can. He sucks too. So you know... This organization does not have a legit long-term answer at the quarterback position. We should all know this by now. Like, imagine thinking to yourself that you want Foles to be the starter again in 2021. Imagine thinking to yourself that you want this organization to sink potentially big money into Trubisky, even on a two- to three-year deal, to bring him back and hoping, by God, that he can at least develop into a Kirk Cousins. You haven't even seen that level of play out of him. Nothing close to it. So you know, no matter what happens with this team the last four games of the regular season, no matter what happens in the offseason in terms of the coaching staff, the front office, you know this Bears team has to be on the hunt for a young quarterback in the offseason. They have to come out of this offseason with some type of option that's young at the quarterback position. Which, of course, inevitably, is going to lead to Bears fans members of Bears Media and Bears Twitter suggesting all types of stupid, idiotic ideas. Because again, dummies are going to do dumb things and say dumb things. That's what they do. So you've got Bears fans continuously asking me and continuously talking about it, but seemingly always continually asking me about whether or not the Bears should trade for Sam Darnold. Now look, I get it. You think that he only sucks because the Jets suck. You think that a change of scenery would be ideal for him. You think this was a guy that in 2018 was taken number three overall, so there has to be some type of talent there. And it's just not being fully or properly utilized by the Jets. He's got a poor set of skill players around him on offense. He's got poor support in terms of the offense as a whole, the schematics, the play calling, the head coach, all of that. I get it. Like those are very easy things and obvious things to point to, yes. But let, let me be clear. Should the Bears trade for Sam Darnold? No. Hell no. God no. What the hell is wrong with you? No, 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 no. Why? So, so help me understand it. Your logic is that a guy that has not shown you he can clearly be the dude after three years, you now want to bring him in for year four and give him a chance. You just did that. This day was Mitchell Trubisky, you idiots. So you want to go down back that same path again? And I'll mind you, by the way, somehow, some way, every year, Sam Darnold seems to get some type of injury. So he's now in his third season. How many times has he played? All 16 games as a starter? Zero! Just like Trubisky. And now you want to bring him in. How much draft pick capital do the Bears currently have in this 2021 draft? Answer, 
Not much. Certainly nothing extra to play with. So you want to sit there and give up draft pick capital that this team really doesn't have, really can't afford, for a guy that's going into his fourth season that looks like an abject failure, and you think somehow, some way, the McCaskies and Hallis Hall are going to spring pixie dust, magic dust, on Sam Darnold, and all of a sudden he's going to stop stinking. Is that what you think? That doesn't matter what you think because that's what morons say. You literally have just gotten done with almost four years of the failures of the Mitchell Trubisky experience. Coming off of the heels of eight years of the Jay Cutler experience. Why do you want to go down the route of trading for somebody else's failed quarterback? Why? You say, well, they traded for Jay Cutler after 2008, before that 2009 season, and he was going into his fourth year then. Yeah, there was also Jay Cutler, who actually had at least flashed something at Denver. That was Jay Cutler, who actually had a 4,000-yard season in 2008. That was Jay Cutler that actually had nice weapons around him, like Brandon Marshall. So... This is also a team coming on the heels of they felt like their defense was still really good and they knew Rex Grossman was officially a turd and they had to make a big statement to move on past from Rex Grossman's failure because Jerry Angelo was a moron and he couldn't evaluate the quarterback position. So instead of throwing draft pick capital into trying to draft guys and develop them, the Bears did what dumb organizations do and they tried to trade for somebody else's guy. Instead of taking a step back and really answer, asking themselves the question of, wait, Cutler's coming off of a 4,000-yard Pro Bowl type of season. Josh McDaniels was hired in as a new head coach. You would think there would be an incentive for him to want to come to the job, but they're looking to deal him. And you might think McDaniels is an idiot for doing so, but maybe that should beg the bigger question of why are they so eager to get rid of a guy after three seasons? Hmm? Hmm? You know, those type of in-depth questions that you should really ask such as how couldn't Trubisky beat out the scrub starting in front of him and he only got one year as a starter? Like these really important questions that you should ask about quarterbacks, the Bears seem to consistently not ask. The Bears fans consistently seem to not ask. The dummies in Bears media and Bears Twitter consistently skip past and don't bother asking or they attempt to minimize or dismiss them. And that's why we end up consistently in the same damn cycle of mediocrity. We've done, been down this path before. The trading for the Jay Cutler didn't work. The trading a first-round pick for Rick Meyer doesn't work. And certainly, you're not going to have to trade a first-round pick for Sam Darnold. But why would you want to trade any pick for him at this point in time? He's closer to a bust than he is a legit NFL starter. Furthermore, just think about the sheer economics of this and just how stupid it is. The Bears are in a really bad place in terms of the salary cap and not necessarily going to get a whole lot better in the next year or two. It's going to take some time. And you've got to reset the window here. You've got to totally reset the window. And trading for a guy going into Season 4 where you potentially have to make a decision on a fifth-year option that you either decline, then at that point you're saying, okay, so you traded for a guy to only have one year of team control on his salary, and if he happens to show you a little thing, then you're going to be suckered into paying him 30 plus million a year because that's what stupid organizations do. Or you sit there and you trade for a guy, and then you bring him in, and then you do pick up the fifth-year option. Then you're still saying, you've traded all of this to give a guy for one, maybe two years, and then if he does work out, you're still having to talk about paying him long term and not even working out at a stud level, just working at a basement level. Like, why would you do that? You're not giving your chance to ever truly reset that window for competing. Just no. And of all things, the Jets still have yet to win a game this year. And you can make an argument at times in 2020 that elite, non-elite Joe Flacco has outplayed Sam Darnold. You want to trade for a guy who throughout his career has been towards the very ass bottom of the league in QBR. You want to trade for a guy and bring him in to be the answer that he cannot be and will not be for you when he's had one season, exactly one season in three, where his completion percentage is above 60%. I believe his total touchdown to interception ratio uh, heading into this past weekend's game, was something like 39 to 36. 
Like, that's Jameis Winston stat lines without the Jameis Winston sizzle. Why would you do that? No. The way you build teams for success and consistent success in the modern NFL, you can take your outliers and your exceptions and shove them up your asses. The way that you do it is you draft and develop your own damn quarterback. Period! Don't help out the Jets and make the decision easy for them to draft a Trevor Lawrence or a Justin Fields or whoever they end up taking first in next year's draft. Don't make it easier for them to move on from Sam Darnold. Don't take on somebody's other recycled refuse or garbage. Why in the hell would you do that? If you sat there and traded for Sam Darnold, to me what that says about the Chicago Bears organization is that they're afraid. They're afraid because they screwed up on Trubisky. They're afraid to screw up again. And if you've got people in that type of position that are afraid to make the most important key decisions, then they have no business being in charge of your organization. Like, trading for Sam Darnold is something that not only an idiot does, but even worse, a coward does. Trust your process, trust your evaluations, and take a swing. Like, part of the reason the Kansas City Chiefs were teetering but never could get over the hump for three-plus decades is because, yes, they screwed up royally bad in 83, taking Todd Blackledge out of Penn State 7th overall. All the while, Jim Kelly and Dan Marino were still on the board. Yes, and that is equivalent in some to some degree to what the Bears did by trading up from 3-2 to two to take Trubisky in 2017 with Mahomes and Watson still on the board. But what happened, the Chiefs got scared and skittish and would never invest in that position in the first round. And then all of a sudden come 2017 because you bring in an offensive coach. You bring in, you know, he'd been there for a few years at that time. You bring in somebody that knows what the hell he's doing. You bring in somebody, of course, that the Bears were never going to entertain because why would you want to bring in a legit NFL head coach with winning experience like an Andy Reid? Who, who, who does that type of stupid stuff? But they eventually realized they needed to move on from the, the veterans and the retreads and no disrespects to the Al, the Alex Smiths or the Trent Greens or the Elvis Gerbachs of the world, but it was time to find their own young stallion. And they did when they drafted Patrick Mahomes. Like, you have to stop being scared of making the decision. Make the decision. And yes, sometimes you fail. And sometimes you fail more spectacularly than others. Rex Grossman was a failure. Jay Cutler ultimately, sorry Bears fans that want to deny reality, he was a failure. He wasn't as bad of a failure as some others, but that doesn't mean he himself wasn't still a failure. He was, he absolutely was. And Mitchell Trubisky is a failure. Nick Foles, failure. But just because you failed with Grossman, just because you failed with Trubisky, just because you failed in the past with Cade McNown, that doesn't mean that you stop trying. But what you don't do is continue to repeat the same mistakes of the past and wuss out, puss out, chicken out, and take on somebody else's garbage. I mean, what, do you, what is even really the appeal or the upside? You could show me one or two good throws that Sam Darnold makes, and he certainly has them, but I could show you to counter that easily two or three poor throws or really dumbass decisions that he makes. So what's your point? No. No trading for Sam Darnold. Just stop. The only answer is to draft and develop a young quarterback. Don't make it easier for the Jets to move on. That's just stupid. If Sam Darnold got released and you happened to sign him to a very low money deal and you took a flyer on him, then that's different because at least then you're not expending draft capital to do so. But even then, I don't know that I want him to do it because then there's going to be that thought of, hey, we got him in here. There's no reason to draft a young quarterback. And uh, the problems of the mediocrity of the McCaskey way only perpetuate and continue for this organization. Do you guys get it now? Do you understand why the Chicago Bears should stay the hell away from Sam Darnold? Do you? Do you?